Hi everybody, it's Mr. Spudic once again. Uh, today we are going to talk about work and simple machines. Okay, and it's our first part in our talk about energy in general. Okay, the next one we'll talk about is going to be about conservation of energy. So they work together, but it's a long lesson, so let's split it up. All right, so first things first, I need you to understand that work is something, basically, if you do work, you are giving an object energy. Okay, so that is a quick and easy way to find out if you're doing work or not. So what you think might be work, okay, in physics, okay, we're not talking about homework, but in physics, if you think you are doing work, if you're lifting a box, are you giving it energy? Yeah, you are, you're gonna give it potential energy, okay? If you're gonna slide something across the floor, are you giving it energy? Well, that one depends, depends on, if you're gonna give it some kinetic energy, if it's gonna be going faster and faster and faster, and you're speeding it up, well then yeah, in that case, you are giving it energy, okay? Um, so that is the idea. When you do work, are you giving an object energy? All right, but there's a formula to go along with it, and the formula is this. Work is equal to the force times the distance going in the same direction as the force, okay, or parallel. So if you see on the notes, D with a little parallel sign, that means the direction of the force, the distance has to be parallel to the force, okay? Like that, like the motion there. So the force is being applied to the right and the box is going to the right. They're both going the same direction, okay? They're both parallel to each other. They, they could be opposite directions sometimes, but they can't be one is going parallel and one's going um, perpendicular. All right, you can't have one going horizontal, one going vertically, all right? But in that case, we did work. Okay, think about some other ways. So again, we said if I lift up a box, think about the force and the direction and the distance, okay? I fight against gravity. That's a vertical force. I'm lifting it up, okay? That was a vertical distance as well, so I did work. What if I lift, I have a box already lifted up, and then I turn and walk at a constant velocity horizontally. Well, in that case, the force I'm fighting against is gravity. I'm not speeding up or giving it any kinetic energy. I'm just going at a constant velocity. So in that case, I am not going to be giving it any work, so, or I'm not giving it any energy, so I'm not doing any work if I'm walking and holding something and moving along at a constant velocity. Okay, so those are some examples of doing work and not doing work. All right, now, one thing you need to understand is this. Regardless of the path, if you get an object to the same spot, if you give the object the same amount of work, whether you lift something straight up or slide it up a ramp or whatever, they did the same amount of work, okay? So, the path does not matter. No matter what, if you get an object to the same spot and it was given the same amount of energy, it must have been do doing it with the same amount of work, okay? Path does not matter. And that whole idea is gonna lead us to simple machines, okay? You've learned about simple machines. Probably in, say, third grade, you learned about simple machines, right? You learned about all these. We have lever, wheel and axle, pulley, all right? Incline plane, wedge, and screw. So you've learned those. But now we need to go much more in detail than what you learned in third grade and talk about the math behind it, okay? So here's the idea with simple machines. With a simple machine, like we talked about the ramp, the idea is that you are going to increase the distance you travel to decrease the force. So the force is, the force is gonna be much less for you when you use a simple machine, okay? And right now, we're gonna not worry about friction, okay? So we, we'll say anything we do is frictionless, and we'll just have it, you know, one direction or the other, but there's no friction going on to make our lives a little bit easier, okay? But again, when I talk about the path does not matter. If I slid something up a ramp, or I lifted it straight up, okay, which one has a greater distance? 
Well, sliding up a ramp would, right? So I'm gonna be going up a ramp. I'm gonna to have to travel a longer distance going up the ramp than I would have to just lift the box straight up. So because there is a longer distance, okay, there's going to be less force. Because if the work is the same, whether I slide it up a ramp or pick it straight up to the same spot, if I get to the same spot, my work is the same. And my formula, force times distance, is going to be equal to it one way or another. So if you look here in the formula, I have a big force times distance. That would be if I lift something up straight up, I'm going to have to have a lot of force to lift that heavy box up. Okay, So I'd have a bigger force, but lifting something straight up would have a smaller distance. Okay, If I use a ramp, well now I'm going to travel a longer distance going up that ramp. So I'm going to have a bigger distance, but because the work is equal, because the work is going to be equal one way or another, that means I have less force. So I could, with simple machines, the whole idea is I'm going to try to increase the distance to decrease the force. Okay? All right. Now, even with a screw, okay, I always wondered. That was one thing, to be honest. Maybe when I was in school, I said, oh, a screw is a simple machine. Okay, yeah. But I didn't really believe it. Okay? A screw is really just a ramp but it's wrapped around itself okay so this picture would show if you take if you had taken say a uh, triangular sheet of paper and wrapped it around a pencil what you would end up with is basically a screw okay all right so that is the idea that's just another way it's really just a ramp and again the concept with a screw would be I increase the distance it's gonna be traveling along this distance going up the screw I'm increasing the distance and decrease the force. All right, um, we will talk about mechanical advantage. In physics class, we talk um, about mechanical advantage just really as itself, mechanical advantage. When you take an engineering course, you might hear more about ideal mechanical advantage and actual mechanical advantage, okay? In this class, we're gonna scrunch them together and we're just gonna worry about zero friction. There's no friction going on. And so really, we'll just say they're the same. Ideal and actual mechanical advantage will be the same value. What is it? Okay, mechanical advantage is first, it's a value. It's a ratio, okay? And the way it'll be for our, in our class, it will be either how many times greater distance you have to travel compared to just say lifting an object up. Okay, so if you think about the ramp, if I was pushing something up a ramp, and let's say the ramp was three meters long and it gets lifted up one meter to get to the same spot, okay? So I could either go three meters up a ramp or I could lift the box up straight up one meter. My mechanical advantage would be the bigger distance divided by the smaller distance, or it would be three divided by one, my mechanical advantage would be three or three to one. Okay. Now force is another way we can deal with mechanical advantage. And for force, it would be the greater force divided by the smaller force. So let's say I still have that example of a box being lifted up. Okay. So I could either, let's say I had to lift that box up with say 900 Newtons. Okay. If I had to lift it up with 900 Newtons or I slid it up the ramp with only pushing 300 Newtons, okay, my bigger force, 900, divided by my smaller force, 300, would again give me a ratio of 3 to 1. Okay, so 900 divided by 300 or, oh, I put it in the wrong spot or so 900 divided by 300 or the distance of 3 meters divided by 1 meter would still give us a ratio of 3 to 1 okay and you could write it as a ratio you could write it just as a value um, it's going to be up to your teacher what they want to see from you okay so what about this ramp here if I said that the mechanical advantage of this ramp was four to one, what are two things we could learn from it? What are two things you could say about this ramp here if you had a mechanical advantage of four to one? I'm gonna 
let you pause it here and think about it and come up with an answer. Okay, so how did we do? For one, the force, right? So if we have a mechanical advantage of four to one, that means the force going up, I would have to lift this box up with four times the force to lift it up than I would be to slide it up the ramp, okay? Or the distance traveled, our distance traveled would, would have to be four times longer going up the ramp than it would be just to pick it up. All right. Now, pulleys. Pulleys are also simple machines. I and mean, you've learned about pulleys and, and you say, yeah, any pulley is a simple machine and that one should be easy to understand. But I wanna, what I want you to understand is this. A single fixed pulley would be called an engineering class a simple machine, but it really would have zero mechanical advantage or, or really one as a mechanical advantage, which means it is not any easier. There's not any less force. So let's pretend, looking at this here, okay, we see this pulley here. So we have, whoops, we have the weight attached to the bottom, okay? And we have 10 pounds on that weight. What is nice about this pulley, it is still helpful because it's going to redirect the force. So it's not like I have to be pulling up that those 10 pounds on my own. Okay, 10 pounds is a lot of weight. I can't lift that, all right? But what happens is it, the weight, the force gets redirected around the pulley and now I can use my own weight, lean back and use my weight pulling down to lift up this 10 pound weight. That's good, okay? But what is the mechanical advantage of it? Well, my mechanical advantage would be the force, okay, one force over another force and it would still be 10 pounds over 10 pounds I'd have a mechanical advantage of one, okay? So really, it's not, it's not separating force, but it also means I'm not going any farther of a distance to lift this up. Okay, now, the next type of pulley here, we have a 10 pound down there, and now it's going to get split up. And I want you to see these strands, okay? Those two five pound strands, okay? And we'll have everything going parallel like you see there, okay? But... I want you to think the word strands like hands, okay? So pretend that these two strands of rope are my hands holding this pulley up. If I had only one hand holding it up, how much force do you think I'd have to hold that, that pulley up with to keep that 10 pounds up? I'd have to hold it up with 10 pounds as well, okay? But now if I have two hands, I can split the weight strands and hands are going to be similar. So if I have two strands splitting the weight up, that means instead of having to hold up with one hand of 10 pounds, I have two hands with five each, okay? Now, because it's the same rope, the force will be going along that rope equally, okay? We call that tension. And tension, whenever you see the word tension, Tension just means force, okay? Force along a rope, all right? But the tension has to stay the same. So all I have to do is hold on to the rope on this end, and I will be lifting this pulley up with only five pounds, all right? So in this example, what's my mechanical advantage? Well, I have the bigger force of 10 pounds being lifted by only five pounds, my mechanical advantage is two. Now what about my distance though, right? We said mechanical advantage, we have to increase the distance to decrease the force. So if I need to lift this up, I'm going to have to pull with twice as much rope to lift up this weight. So if I wanted to pull this, let's say I wanted to pull this uh, these 10 pounds up uh, and I need to lift it up one meter, okay? So my bigger distance divided by my smaller distance. If I want to pull this up one meter, I'm going to actually have to pull with two meters of rope. So it'll be two meters being lifted up with my hands to get this weight up lifted only one meter. All right. 
If I confuse you, let's try another one and let's look at that. All right. So with pulleys, they also talk about a block and tackle system. And that would be a lot of pulleys. It's used in many different uh, scenarios. Okay, sailboats. If you have a really big sailboat you need to, and you need to lift this really heavy sail up, what you're going to do is have a block and tackle system. And it means there's going to be a block of pulleys at the bottom attached to the sail and a block of pulleys at the top of the mast. Okay, and the rope will be, uh, be uh, strung around it. And so what will happen is this. As you pull, okay, you're going to pull a lot of rope and the sail's going to slowly go up, but it'll, it will allow you to lift this really heavy sail, okay, with just your own force. All right, so here's my picture of a block and tackle system. This isn't exactly how it would look, okay, but just to spread it out to show you. So the idea would be this. In this case, what would my mechanical advantage be? Well, I have four strands that are going to split up the weight of the 800 Newton box. So those four strands will equally split up the weight. Okay, so what that means is I will only have to lift with 200 Newtons. So what's my mechanical advantage? Well, bigger force divided by smaller force. So my mechanical advantage will be four. Now, what does that mean about the uh, pulling of the rope and the distance? If I need to lift this box up one meter, how many meters of rope do I have to pull? Well, I have to pull with four meters of rope to get this box up to go a little bit, just one meter. Okay, all right. We don't need to copy this down, but what do you think looking at this picture here? how many strands are actually being used to split up the weight what i want you to do again is to think about hands okay whether it's this picture or going back to that picture you only have four strands splitting up that weight if you see this other part of the rope here let's say somebody's holding it right here here's my beautiful picture right there okay hey there's our guy holding the rope now this strand here is not supporting the box. It's not another hand holding and helping to hold up that box. So this strand does not count. Okay, so moving back over to this, looking at the strands, how many strands are actually helping to hold up that motorcycle? Well, we have one, that one's helping to hold it up, right? Because it's connected to the pulley. Two, three, Four. This strand here, however, is not helping to support the weight of the motorcycle, so it would not be counted. So once again, what's our mechanical advantage going to be? It's just going to be the number of strands supporting the, the, the object. So right now, once again, the mechanical advantage would be four. Okay? All right. Now, one last thing, um, power. When you want to know what's more powerful, it's not just the work being done, but the time it takes to get that work done. Okay, so power, the equation for power will be work divided by time. Okay, now the units for that are watts. Watt? That's, that's a great joke, I know. All right, so watts are going to be the units for any type of power being done. Now, you've seen watts, right? You've seen watts for light bulbs. You've seen watts for um, plugging in your refrigerator or a stereo. You're gonna be seeing some type of rating for watts. And what that's telling you is how much work is being done divided by the time, okay? So I could lift up a really heavy, uh, you know, let's say I lift weights and I lift up a really heavy bar. If I lift it up in 10 seconds and my friend lifts it up in two seconds, we both did the same amount of work, but my friend was doing it faster because he's more powerful than me, okay? All right, another note about those Watts. That is named after James Watt. And James Watt, you might have remember, He's credited to building the, uh, the steam engine. And what is happening is we are really tying in what we have learned in our history classes with what we are learning in, in science and in physics. Because 
James Watt is taking this idea that he can take energy. He can take uh, heat or any type of energy and uh, get work done. Okay, so this is really tying into the industrial revolution that you might have learned about before. Okay, and one watt, another note is that one watt is going to be one joule done per second. So watts are joules per second. Okay, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.